Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Geiselman and I am one of the ninth grade physical science teachers here at STMA. Mr. Oleg, Mr. Swenson, Mr. Kuhn and I are working together to put our lectures together for the class. So you might see any one of us. So I might not be your teacher, or I might be your teacher. If you have any questions, even if you're not in my class, go ahead and feel free to stop me and ask, uh, ask whatever you uh, need or whatever you're feeling for the class. So today's lecture is gonna be about the metric system units for distance and the metric system units for mass. And that's what we're gonna start with today. One more addition to that list if you have. So when we talk about metric units, right, we're gonna be talking about measurements. And there's two parts that are really important to every measurement. So a measurement is a quantitative observation consisting of two parts. And a quantitative observation consisting of two parts, what does that mean? The word quantitative tells us part of that word right there. Okay. So the word quantitative tells us that there's going to be some sort of quantity. Right? So the quantitative part of that is going to tell us a number. Quantitative means quantity. So there's going to be some sort of number associated with these these different things right whatever the observation is so the first thing is there's going to be a number so there's going to be some sort of number six five two point five seventy four a hundred and eight point seven there's gonna be a number associated with this and down here at the bottom you can kind of see that there's this phrase no naked numbers what does that mean well, that means that that number has to have some sort of label. You can't just have a bare number. A bare number doesn't tell us enough. We need that second part of that observation, right? And that is the unit. So six apples, five dogs, a hundred pounds. Those are all examples of numbers and use units. So those are accurate measurements that we can use. So an example here, 246.7 grams. There's a number, right, a quantitative number, quantitative observation. We know how much with a label, and that tells us what we're actually measuring, grams, right? So that's a really good example of a measurement that we would use here in class. The next piece of this, then, is what we're going to talk about with distance. So distance, by definition, is the length traveled from a starting point. So we measure that in meters. So if we started at home and we went a certain distance, right? We traveled to school, we traveled to the grocery store. We can figure out how far we went by tracking our position from A to B in meters. It's really closely related to this word displacement. And it's a little bit different, but really what distance is, is how far we've actually traveled. How far have we gone? Displacement is the shortest distance from the initial point to the final point. And that's really easy to see here when we look at this picture. Let's pretend you are at home at point A. Point A is you at home. And then you take the bus to school. And this blue dotted line is the uh, bus route. You go through neighborhoods, you make all the stops, you get everybody else on the bus, and then you finally get to school here at point B. Now, the distance you traveled is a lot further than the shortest possible route between A and B. That's the difference between distance and displacement. Displacement is the shortest possible route that you went, you could have gone, and then distance is the actual route that you went. So your displacement can never be shorter than your distance. I mean, excuse me, your displacement can never be longer than your distance but your distance can be a, a lot longer than your displacement. So when we talk about the meter, right, we're talking about a unit, and what is it? The meter is a base, the metric base unit for distance. The way they came up with the meter is kind of interesting. They actually took the distance from the equator to the North Pole and divided it by one million. So it's one one millionth of the distance from the equator to the North Pole. That's where they got the meter from. How do we measure a meter? We use meter sticks here in class. And if for things that are a little bit smaller, we're gonna use like a metric ruler. 
There's some other fancy ways that they've developed to measure a meter using wavelengths of light and different things like that in a vacuum. But for you and I, a meter is really just about 3.28 feet or 39 inches. So that's about how big a meter is. It's just a little bit over three feet long. When we talk about meters, there's three common prefixes that we use most often. The first one is centi, right? And centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. And that means that 100 centimeters fit into one meter. It's really appropriate when we're using it to measure things like the size of your cell phone. It'd be kind of goofy to take a meter stick and figure out how many meters your cell phone is because it's not a very good representation of that. A much better one would be centimeters to measure the size of your phone. So centi, right, tells us that there's 100 centimeters inside of one base unit, one meter. The prefix milli means there's 1,000 of them in the base unit. So one one thousandth of a meter is equal to one millimeter. So there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. This is really appropriate for really small things. If we are measuring the size of insects or other very small objects, millimeters would be really appropriate to use. If we wanted to measure my height in millimeters, that'd be a little bit silly because that is so many millimeters, we could use a better prefix for that. Another one that we use a lot is the kilometer. Kilo means that there's going to be, it's a thousand times bigger than the base unit. So there are a thousand meters inside of one kilometer or kilometer. This is really appropriate for using distances that we might drive. So if you had to drive from STMA to Rogers, that would be a really good example of a time where you should use kilometers. If you're going for a run, all right, kilometers would be a, probably a pretty good run. So the next piece of this then is kind of using a meter stick and how do we do it? To start off, we always want to read it, the meter stick from the side that starts at zero and goes up to 100. All right, and each bold little line or bold print um, right here on the screen, I'll circle one. So one, two, three, those numbers are going to represent centimeters. And the distance from the start to that point on the centimeter, or sorry, on the line is how far it is in centimeters. The small lines represent millimeters. And millimeters, again, are one one thousandth of a meter. So there's a thousand millimeters on each meter stick. And again, you can see the pencil here, you can measure it in centimeters. You can measure the eraser in millimeters. Those would be really appropriate terms for that. A meter stick is pretty accurate, so it allows us to measure to 0 0.001 meters, or one one thousandth of a meter. When we're measuring really small things, like if we wanted to measure this pencil's eraser, it'd be way more appropriate for us to use a metric ruler or a ruler with centimeters marked on it and other small measurements like millimeters. That brings us into our next piece, which is mass. And mass, by definition, is a measure of the amount of matter or stuff inside of an object. So how much stuff fits into a certain volume? That's going to be its mass. The standard unit for mass is a gram, and we represent that with a lowercase g. And we use a balance to measure mass. These are not scales. Scales measure weight. and Weight and mass are a little bit different. The one on the left is an electric balance, and then the one on the right is a two-pan balance, which we'll talk a little bit more about how to use in a few slides. Mass and weight are different, though. No matter where you are, your mass is going to stay the same. But your weight can change based on where you're located, and weight has to do with gravity. So if we took you on the moon, your weight would be different than it is here on the Earth, because gravity is different here on Earth than it is on the moon but your mass would always be the same. That wouldn't change. So when we look at the gram, it's the metric base unit for mass. Again, we use a balance, but it was originally derived from 
one cubic centimeter or one milliliter of pure water right above freezing temperature. So when it's at its densest, right? And it's the base unit. So everything is built off of a gram. Now, a gram is actually a really small kind of uh, measurement. Not many things weigh one gram that we interact with a lot. So we use the kilogram a lot for the official SI unit for mass. So things like you and I would be measured in kilograms. So kilogram is just used a lot more often. To give you an idea, one pound is about 454 grams, or two pounds is equal to about a kilogram. So we'll probably end up talking a lot more about kilograms in the long run. So the common prefixes for mass, we've talked about milligram before. We talked about millimeter. So milligram is one one thousandth of a gram. So there's a thousand milligrams in each gram. It's really appropriate when we're using things like medication. If you're taking Tylenol, measure you can find Tylenol that has 200 milligrams of acetaminophen, which is the thing that makes you feel better. You can get the extra strength ones that have 400 or 800 milligrams. It's really appropriate for measuring things like that. The kilogram then is 1,000 grams. So there's 1,000 grams in each kilogram, and that's really appropriate for when we're measuring things like the mass of a car, or of a human, or of your dog, or of a weight in the weight room. Kilogram is what we use most often for measuring mass. When we look at a two-pan balance, this is what we have in class to measure mass. So when we come and do labs, this is what we're going to be using. For objects with masses below 210 grams, you're only going to need to adjust the sliding masses on the balance. So these two masses here slide up and down to adjust and balance out something that we would put on the pan. So let's say we put a box here on the pan. That's 100 grams. We're going to move these sliding masses until this arrow, this little needle with the arrow, balances out again. And then we're going to be able to read where these sliding masses are, and that will tell us how much mass that object has. Now, our sliding masses only go up to 210 grams. So what do we do if we have something that's bigger than 200? Let's say we have a really big object that has lots of mass. Let's say it has 300 grams of mass. What we're going to do is we're going to use something called a counter mass. These are objects that we know the exact mass of. So we might put a 100 gram mass on this side to help balance. And then we will adjust the sliders until our arrow and needle balance out again. So that's the case for something that's over 210, kilogram, or 210 grams. And that is for specifically for the ones that we use in class. So that is, should be right here at the bottom. For objects with masses above 210 grams, we're going to need to use a counter mass along with the sliding malice, uh, masses until it balances out. Now, we've been talking about the metric units, and that's something that we don't use here in our daily lives a lot. We measure things in feet and in inches, and we measure things in pounds and in ounces instead of kilograms. So common conversions for mass, one pound equals about 4, 0.4536 kilograms, or one kilogram equals about 2.2 pounds. Those are pretty common conversions. So if you have something that weighs 2.2 pounds, it also equals one kilogram. Common conversions for distance, one inch is about 2.54 centimeters. So about two and a half centimeters fit into every inch. So there's about 3.28 feet in every meter. Now, what does that really mean? A lot of people, you know, think, okay, that's, I, I don't know exactly what that would look like. Well, if we took something that weighed 100 kilograms, that would weigh about 220 pounds. So it's a pretty big adult. 
And then if something is two meters tall, that's about six foot six. So if you think about Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was pretty close to a hundred kilograms and he was really close to two meters, right? And he's a big guy. He played in the NBA, big, tall guy. He's about a hundred kilograms and right around six foot six or that two meter height. So for example, I am six foot three. Mr. Geiselman is six foot three and I weigh about 210 pounds. So what is my height and weight in the appropriate metric units? So let's start with height. What would be the appropriate unit to use here? It's probably going to be meters, right? So we're going to take feet to meters. And I kind of went one step ahead and I already converted my height into inches. So six foot three is equal to 75 inches tall. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this equal to, and we're going to go through this a little bit in class. If you have me, and I'm sure Mr. Swenson and Mr. Ole can help you out with this later. And we're going to end up what we call doing dimensional analysis, which is something you'll do a lot of in chemistry. So you might get a, you might get to see it. You might not before then. But what I would do is I would take the things on the top and I'd multiply them together. So 75 times 2.5 times one, and that will leave me with my unit of meters divided by one times 100. And the reason I cross those out is because those units cancel out and I get my new units that I want. And I get a height of about 1.905 meters. So the distance from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet is 1.905 meters. The next one then is weight. So we're gonna use the appropriate units. Now the base unit is grams, but that's probably not appropriate. So we're gonna go pounds to kilograms. And same thing, we're gonna kind of do this process where we're able to cancel out units. So 210 pounds is what I started with. That's how much I weigh. And I'm going to divide that by how many pounds fit into a kilogram or how many kilograms fit into a pound. So I'm going to multiply the things on top. I'm left with the unit I want. So 210 times 4 point, or sorry, 0.4536 divided by one. And that gives me my answer of 95.26 kilograms, all right? We will definitely go over how to do these conversions. It's not something I'm, we're expecting you guys to do right now, but I just wanted to show you how it's done. If you have any questions, please let me know and have a fantastic day.